Hello and welcome to the triumphant return of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am coming at you on the 7th of November 2024. It's been a while since I've done a video. To be honest, I was getting a bit sick of it. I've been doing this for many years and um, I got a bit sick of being caught up in all the depressing stuff and it was kind of getting to me a little bit, to be honest, you know. So uh, I took some time out. Longest time I've had not making videos since I started at the beginning of the year of the Lurgy, back then in the day. And of course, um, I've been doing um, a bit of music, doing a bit of music production work and stuff like that um, in my spare time. Um, getting the old creativity flowing again. And to be honest, I think I'm going to do that again. I think uh, my videos are going to be fewer and further between as I go into the future. But how could I not? come back now i mean seriously i had to come back now because you know it's not just the triumphant return of me doing these videos it's also the triumphant return of donald trump now i know there's a lot of people out there that don't like him right and that's the thing but uh, gotta be honest right um his opposition the people who seemed to um, be the gatekeepers and the key holders of the status quo were becoming a very desperate bunch were they not man? i mean the state of that senile um joe biden i mean completely you know incapable of running a bath never mind flipping country and then that second um, in line you know word salad woman well it's turned out true that now kamala harris has not been elected that america it will be uh, unburdened by what has been but not in the way that she wanted to, to be unburdened by what has been anyway that's kind of cool and um yeah i'm looking at the state of the uk and thinking how absolutely screwed the uk is and us uk relations look like they're not going to be very good really when uh, donald trump comes in of course you know keir starmer and david lammy have to congratulate him um because they have to be seen to be doing it because they can't not you know why didn't they just be honest and go on there and slag him off i mean you know but uh, there you go. You know, when you get a bunch of corrupt people who are feeding at the trough of globalism and then an opposing force ends up winning in the most powerful and richest country in the world, they've got to pay lip service, even though we all know that they all know that we all know that they all know that they're just bullshitting. I mean, it's what it comes down to. So congratulations, uh, Americans, and uh, the fact that um, you have basically seized Mordor you have thrown the ring into Mount Doom and you have freed yourself from the forces of darkness. And we can only hope now that the rest of the world follows suit and frees itself from the forces of darkness. I don't have much hope for the UK. To be honest, I think the UK is going to be some kind of weird Western woke version of North Korea. Canada as well looks like um, you know it's going to take a while to get Canada out of the abyss but I honestly do think that over the course of the next five to eight to ten years um, things could change and uh, this a new paradigm could come into existence now of course for me it's not about cult of personality it never is um, it's about other things but before I've got to look at all the people who are freaking out about Donald Trump, I've got just a bunch of um, freaker outers, because you know what it's like, woke freaker outers. Now, woke freaker outers are brilliant if you stick them on top of the sound of death metal. So check this montage out that I've created and see you at the other end. Yeah, unbeatable, eh? You know, but they do uh, they do create great comedy. Now, this is the thing. These people are really freaking out, aren't they? They're, it's like their world has ended. It's like, what the hell has happened to them? Why have they got like that? This Trump derangement syndrome is definitely a very real thing. I mean, this is the trouble. I mean, you know, we've got everyone's so stupid these days. It's like a moronic version of 1984. You know, um, you have an election. Um, uh, the, the people who are trying to rig the election the most are 
the Democrats, obviously. And of course, even Keir Starmer sent a bunch of people over, like Labour people over to America, to uh, to try to influence people to vote for Kamala Harris. And uh, you know, so we know that the kind of woke establishment and the kind of uh, loony lefty establishment has been doing all of the rigging, all of the rigging. We also know that they've tried lawfare on Donald Trump. They've um, set him up uh, with a bunch of trumped up charges, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, and um, at the same time as doing that, the media are th th extremely biased. They're not impartial, like the way they like to make themselves out to be. So we've had a bunch of tantrums on uh, bo you know, both sides of the pond, so to speak, from the uh, pundits, the talking heads on the media. And um, it's just utterly, utterly ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, you know, the, the, the thing, what it comes down to is the fact that here you've got a bunch of corrupt um, loony lefties, champagne socialists, feeding at the trough, you know, on a gravy train, and they want to keep themselves on a gravy train, and a certain status quo that exists in the world keeps them on that gravy train. At the same time that, um, you know, in the case of, I mean, America has certainly been feeling the pinch. Both Britain and America have been flooded, as well as other countries in Europe as well, have been flooded and flooded and flooded with um, immigration levels that are completely off the scale, that are unsustainable, that are economically damaging and detrimental, divisive, and, um, you know, causing serious, serious problems. It's all a bad management thing, you know, obviously not a, not a racist thing from my point of view. I mean, God, doesn't even be sane, does it? No. So, what do I see? What's happened? Well, all you have to do is look at the markets, look at the stock market, look at the crypto market. The, the markets, the economies uh, of the world, are responding very well. The dollar has gone up against the pound and has gone up against the euro. So if you take it from the perspective of the, of the economies, um, it's responding very well to um, Trump and Trump administration being elected. So the people who um, manage money and manage wealth and manage um, you know, economies in general um, obviously uh, think that this is a really good thing and that, uh, if anything, that having uh, the Democrats come back with Kamala Harris, word salad woman, you know, um, for the next um, few years would be like um, getting the Titanic and um, replacing the captain with just a bunch of kids that you found and saying, go on, play with all the machines. Because you know? that's basically what's been happening. Now, it's really unfortunate on the other side of the pond from Brits, and I mean, I have to make my videos Britain-centric because I am from Britain myself, and it looks like it's going to take a very long time for Britain to get itself out of the dark abyss that it finds itself in. Now, um, as you know, that uh, Britain now, um, farmers are going to be screwed out of their land because of inheritance tax, uh, which is absolutely terrible because, um, you know, they barely um, scrape anything together. Um, and the chances are, right, that when um, you know, old farms die, and the next bunch of, uh, you know, the family members inherit the tax, they would be given a bill, you've got to pay 20% of anything on this land owned over 1 million, and so they'll have to, and if they've got a 3 million or a 4 million pound uh, farm or whatever, they'll have to sell off a big chunk of their land. That land will probably be um, either put in the hands of Bill Gates, and the corporate farmers will be taking over from that, or if that doesn't happen, they'll probably just stick bloody windmills and solar panels on it um, as they attempt to uh, you know, do their net zero thing, which is a complete and utter failure. It needs another hundred years, at least hundred years of research and development, you know? And I don't know why you can't do mini, mini modular nuclear power, which of course um, is a lot more refined and a hell of a lot safer than it was back in the day. Why they don't set up things like that, I don't know, but the greenies for some reason don't like that. And, um, you know, the infrastructure is not built, so they want to, they're not going to go for the oil that's already there in the North Sea. Um, they have no idea how to run an economy. Like I say, they couldn't even run their own noses. Uh, they are utterly useless. Labour are yeah, anti-growth, anti-wealth, anti-prosperity, anti-bloody everything, you know. This is what it comes down to. But they love the free stuff that they get donated to them, do they not? Right. And. Um, so Britain now is going to have a very frosty relationship with the United States. Now what do I see in the United States? There's a few things that I think are actually really good to come of this, right? Because this is not just about Trump. Right? Now, of course, Trump is a kind of the, the person who has to lead this, and the fact is that he survived everything they've thrown at him, including two assassination attempts. He has the House of Representatives, he has the Senate, 
he has won the electoral college vote, he has won the popular vote. He's not going to worry too much about the, all the impeachment processes that he had before. He also, um, I think it's good that he lost last time because in the last four years he's had a chance to gather together some more visionary people and he's not going to have any wrong ones in his cabinet this time like he did before. Um, not as many anyway, you know. Um, He's not going to have as many saboteurs. Um, he's learnt um, a lot in the last four years and, um, you know, consolidating to come back. It's a good idea that, D that e Elon Musk is going to come along and um, do what is a Department of Government Efficiency, which the acronym is DOGE, you know, like Dogecoin. <laughs> That's just very Elon, that is, right? But I like the idea of making the government more efficient, getting rid of everything in the government that is inefficient, stripping it down to the bare essentials, what it needs. And if he does the same to the United States government as what he did to Twitter when he turned to X, he got rid of loads of waste. So loads of waste from the US government will go. That's the first thing. The fact that um, both uh, Tulsi Gabbard and Robert F. Kennedy have decided to walk the floor is it, um, you know, away from the Democrats and come over. And the fact that, uh, you know, uh, Robert F. Kennedy wants to actually take on Big Pharma and Big Food and try to um, get rid of a lot of the, say, you know, additives and stuff like that that are banned in European countries, that are bad for your diet, bad for your health. Um, the fact that, um, you know, what's been going on in America is that Big Pharma and Big Food seem to work, um, you know, in collusion with each other to make you unhealthy on one hand and then to buy the drugs to treat the symptoms of that unhealthiness on the other, right? Um, he's going to be taking on that and that's a good thing. The chances are he will also um, attempt to declassify things related to his uncle, who, you know, was assassinated in 1963 in extremely dubious circumstances. So it might bring closure to um, uh, things that have been uh, the stuff of conspiracy theories, uh, conspiracy theorists for, 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 you know, over 60 years. So that'd be interesting to see what comes of that, you know. And um, yeah, um, apart from that, yeah, like I say, you know, there's going to be some of the most visionary people who are going to be in key positions in the American government in a very long time. Um, the interventionists' wars, um, of course, and the war machine and the whole sort of military industrial complex, I think um, that's going to be dealt with. I think that, um, you know, negotiations with Vladimir Putin are going to come along. That's going to be good. I also think that um, he's going to be negotiating as well with Xi Jinping, as well as with Kim Jong Un, which means that this place where I am in the east of the world, I reckon will be better off as a result because there's territorial wars in the, the South China Sea between China and the Philippines. And of course, as you know, um, you know, Philippines is an American protectorate, so I do think that things are going to be better. I also think that um, Xi Jinping uh, would think twice before um, trying to take Taiwan, whereas if Biden was back in power, um, you know, so I kind of think international relations are going to be good. The populist uprisings that will be happening in Europe will be galvanised by Donald Trump coming in. And the way it looks at the moment, unfortunately, it looks like there's going to be one outlier in the world. Weak, woke Britain, you know, with uh, Keir Jong-un as the Prime Minister. It's going to be stuck in this uh, horrible, like, dystopian nightmare. And it's just going to be fucking horrible for Brits. And, uh, Brits, you've got to really got to get your fingers out and get your ass into gear. I mean, I'm not there at the moment, so I don't really plan on returning. I'm also fortunate enough to have a backup nationality as well, you know, which comes in handy to have parents who are Irish, um, you know. So uh, we've got to see how it goes. But I am actually feeling very positive and very optimistic and very bullish for the future of the world. And this legacy needs to be something that has to go beyond Trump, right? Because um, for me, it's not just about him. It's about the fact that uh, America has been saved from the saboteurs, the same saboteurs who are working for the globalists that we still have in the UK, that half of Europe still has them. That, you know, the, the rest of the Commonwealth Anglosphere countries still have this problem. And, um, you know, it really needs America to get its arse into gear. And I think this is a good chance for America to do, to get its arse into gear. Beyond Trump, well, if, uh, say, for instance, the next um, election comes along and it's either J.G. Vance or Vivek Rabaswamy, who are going to be the leaders, um, who are going to be the candidates, shall I say, and you never know, it could be one of them two or it could be Ron DeSantis, don't know. And if, uh, say, for instance, that the Republicans have come in from the cold and have demonstrated to everyone that they're not the, 
that they're not the racist and sexist people that the stupid woke think they are, demonstrated also that they're not the old-fashioned right Puritans of the Bush and, you know, uh, yeah, the Bush is era. They're not, you know, a bunch of, uh, what we call it, killjoys, but all the killjoys now are on the left and people can fully grasp the, the political flipping that happened, that the, unlike in the days when I was young, when the political um, right were the killjoys and the political left seemed to be where all the counterculture was, it now has flipped. Once enough people understand that, I think that a uh, second Republican term in the United States with one of those people, J.D. Vance, Vivek, or any of those people, and if Elon is um, carrying on helping with them as well, I don't know, you know, again, Robert F. Kennedy will be getting old himself by then. Trump will be 82, you know, by the time the next election comes up. So I don't know if he'll be able to do much, but maybe a minor advisory role, whatever. But the fact is that what happens now in America has to be that the Democrats need to be left out in the cold. They need to stay out in the cold and they shouldn't be around for 12 years. That's what I think, Americans, get this. No more, no more Democrats for at least 12 years, right? And um, I know that uh, they always say that Americans don't like, uh, you know, Brits p poking their oar in. Look, to be honest, I think Britain is screwed at the moment. I think it would take a minimum of four and a half to, uh, to, to, to nine years or ten years even for Britain to be able to come out of the abyss that it's in at the moment. And even then, I think it would take another five years on top of that for Britain to prosper as a result of that. I think Britain has got a long way to go. We just have to see, because you just don't know, do you? You just don't know. Maybe we've got a few aces hidden up our sleeves, but as I say, um, the longer I stay out of Britain, because when I'm there, one of the problems that I feel uh, being in Britain, of course, is that I feel like a, an outcast. I feel like the shit on the boot of the middle classes. I also feel, because I've never really been a normie, and I don't really fit in very much into that society that well, um, that I would never be taken seriously. The best I could hope for is that I'd just be seen as one of Britain's eccentrics. So I don't feel like the shit on the boot of the posh. What I feel like as a result of not being there is a combination of two things. Um, like a, an old um, Victorian gentleman of leisure, partly, but I also feel a little bit like a, a rebellious 1776 American. And this is the thing. America now is in the hands of the uh, people who have the spirit of the original rebellious English men, right? Now take that spirit and do the best you can do with it. Britain and America at the moment are about as far apart now as for the longest time as they've been politically since probably 1776 at this rate. And we certainly need one ourselves. We need a 1776 moment in the UK, right? Now, a lot of people, of course, are still bought into the bullshit of, uh, you know, that anyone who doesn't follow woke establishment stuff is a fascist. A lot of people in the UK are actually suffering from the uh, American import of woke. We're going to be stuck in 2020 for a while. Britain is still going to be stuck in that kind of 2020 George Floyd Black Lives Matter bullshit for a lot longer than America, despite the fact that all this came from America. The fact that we don't have um, um, an amendment or in a constitution that guarantees freedom of speech under law in the UK also means that it's going to be uh, quite difficult for um, Brits as well. But I'm not there. I don't plan on going back there. Um, and, uh, you know, but I do, you know, my heart is there. The ancient land, that's the bit that I feel I'm connected to. The ancient landscape of those islands, you know. And of course there's two nations on those islands, I'm native to both of them, there's Ireland as well. We just gotta hope now, of course, that this will lead to something good. And I am actually very hopeful. I'm actually a lot happier about um, this than I thought I would be. It feels like a huge weight has been lifted. It feels like the ring has been thrown into Mount Doom and Sauron's tower has come down for me right now. And I just really hope that a lot of people who still buy in to, you know, a lot of the more leftist things who are, especially people who are my age or a little bit older than me who've bought into this, you know, this is not, the, they're not the political left of the 1980s. We're in a different time now. A paradigm shift has happened, a political flippening has happened. We're living in a different reality operating system from the time that we grew up in, right? And, you know, back then I wouldn't have had anything to do with anyone who was conservative or right-leaning, not at all. But now, when I see that the people, the last people on earth that I thought who would be into pro-censorship, 
The last people on earth that I thought who would be offended by other people's opinions, other people's ways of being, you know, and demanding that we all be, you know, we all conform to their emotional immaturity and their lack of cognitive ability because they don't understand the differences actually between objective and subjective. They don't understand the differences between absolute and relative and they are solipsistic and they think that um, the world must be the way they want it to be or they'll just have a fucking three-year-old tantrum. I'm sick of these people. I wish they'd go away. I really do. And, um, you know, so for me, I think what is happening in the United States right now is hope. There is something good, good that could come of this. There's a long way to go, but I'll tell you what, the Klaus Schwab's of the world now are going to have... They're not going to be... They're not going to be throwing their weight around. They suddenly seem to have lost a little bit of their omnipotence, don't they? You know, X is safe, Elon is safe, free speech, you know, is, is saved. Now, all that needs to be done now is for the people that are pro-free speech in America, under this new administration, to then say, yes, we got free speech. We're, we're, not, we're not going to um, do with any of that woke bollocks anymore. But now what we have to do is to encourage common decency and encourage people to be actually nice and good to each other, polite and respectful to each other under those circumstances, you know? And then Bob's your uncle, jobs are good and, you know, then we're sorted. Right, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I don't know when I'm going to do a video again. I'll try to come back as often as I can. But at the moment, I quite like the freedom of not being, you know, not having a ball and chain we're just making videos all the time so if you don't mind my content being a little bit sparser that's cool but nevertheless see you later alligator see you soon baboon if you like this content don't forget to like subscribe and share and while you're at it check out all our social media links please help this channel grow your help will be appreciated